Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, just uh, as a very quick background, um, we uh, we published uh, the uh, payments aspects of financial inclusion report in April 2016, which was before the Fiji initiative started. It is a cooperation between the World Bank and the BIS through the Committee on Markets and Payments Infrastructure. So once Fiji started, we started thinking that maybe we should uh, uh, use uh, the Fiji information to update the report. Because the original report from 2016 contains seven guiding principles that helps and assist countries uh, that seek to advance financial inclusion in their market. So we think with the Fiji experience, maybe we can add on value. So what we did is that in October 2018, we reconvened our PAFI task force and we set ourselves three goals. The first one was to provide additional guidance on recent fintech developments. The second uh, was to produce tools to facilitate the application of the PAFI guidance. And the last one was to develop a measurement framework to assist countries in tracking progress. And both of the, the, these three work streams uh, culminated in the publication of two reports in 2020. And I'll quickly present each of them since they contain a lot of useful information for Fiji as well. Uh, the first report was released in April of, 20, 000, uh, of 2020 and uh, was called Payment Aspects uh, of uh, Financial Inclusion in the FinTech Era. And here we looked at all the new FinTech developments over the last few years. Because remember, everything is, is very recent. In 2016, there wasn't as much going on as there is today. So the first report is fairly limited on fintech. It does mention it, but it's not so expansive as this report. So we, we put all the new developments and products in three groups, uh, the products, technologies and access modes, and we sort of developed a big wheel in which we put all these things in place and we call it a PAFE FinTech wheel, and it helps you to better understand the interactions between different technologies. Um, the analysis of the report tells you that FinTech presents both opportunities and challenges in improving access to and use of transaction accounts. Opportunities, I'm thinking of improved uh, design of transaction accounts, I'm thinking of uh, better and easier access to your account uh, and all kinds of other uh, things that help people to uh, get access. Of course, there are risks, and I'm thinking here of cyber risks, uh, fraud risks, uh, and, other, uh, and people uh, not uh, using the, the tools properly and, and, and maybe, uh, you know, getting into trouble. Um, so these are what we did to do. Then we looked at the seven puffy. Um, guiding principles, which we had released already in the original report, and we came to the conclusion that the guiding principles as such are still very relevant. Nothing has fundamentally changed. We were very happy with that. But we, had, we, we decided that it would be useful to provide additional guidance. And this we did by providing bullets, or to be correct, sub-bullets. So the existing uh, guidance is framed in bullets, and where a certain bullet could use some explanation with respect to fintech developments, we added a sub-bullet. So there will be six or seven or eight uh, sub-bullets which were added to the original report. And I think this is in a nutshell uh, what the report um, is trying to do. Uh, the second report, which was released very recently in September 2020, and it's called Payments Aspect of Financial Inclusion Application Tools, and this basically contains tools uh, designed to assist countries in applying uh, the PAFI guidance. Um, I will not go into any details because it's very technical. Uh, it's supposed uh, to give a hands-on uh, help to people. There are six, seven annexes in the report. They provide questionnaires, they provide tables, uh, statistics, tools, uh, everything that a country can use. Um, so countries who really want to get down to improving things can use this as a sort of a manual, a guidebook on how to implement the tools we set out in the 2016 report. One last uh, thing of interest in my view is that we also added a tool we call the Puffy Radar. And it's kind of a visual gimmick uh, where uh, a country can visualize uh, its status on each of the seven guiding principles by putting a bullet on a, on a map and you get a radar. And you can then put benchmarks in, which like, for example, are the best countries or the G20 countries or any other benchmark you prefer. And this is a dynamic tool which will allow countries to see, you know, I make progress, but I need more progress. And two years later, you do the same <clears throat> analysis and you see that you made progress. So this is really, I think, a visual tool that will be 
pleasant and, and interesting to use and also very good in uh, indicating progress. So that's what we did in those, uh, which is actually quite a lot uh, for a few years. Well, PAFI uh, benefited in several ways uh, from Fiji, and of course Fiji pro uh, benefited from PAFI. So I think we managed to, to, to establish a positive feedback loop uh, whereby information from one goes into the other and the other way around. We benefited in, in, in particular from two uh, specific ways. First, we used the information from the uh, country programs uh, run by uh, Fiji, namely Mexico, Egypt and China. Uh, we also have other countries from members of the task force as well as World Bank studies. So we had quite a lot of uh, expert experience with countries trying to apply our framework. And the second was the working groups, and then in particular the EPA, EPA group or the Electronic Payments Acceptance Working Group. They did a lot of useful uh, analytical work which we used as an input. And as it happens, um, it was a very useful way of cooperating in a sense, because I think it was very complementary, whereas in PAFI we look at the demand side, how can we get people to, to make more use of, uh, of electronic payments by providing them help and things. The EPA working group was looking at the supply side and they were seeing how can we encourage shopkeepers and merchants to accept electronic payments. And I think that in itself was a useful tool. Uh, so this analysis also greatly uh, stimulated our thinking and our fintech reports. Uh, so I think that was, that was quite good that while the project was running, we could interact uh, in a mutually beneficial way and both improve our work. I think the future beyond Fiji looks very bright. I mean, Fiji was very instrumental in putting a lot of wheels in motion. Um, the participating institutions, of course, the Bill Gates Foundation as a main sponsor, but particularly the ITU, the World Bank and the CPMI uh, BIS, have spent a lot more time focusing on, on financial inclusion. I think that is, is, is very good. Um, we use this to make additional work and we started new studies but also i think just in deepening the existing tools um, as i said uh, before uh, the PAFI framework is very helpful in uh, putting people uh, in helping people to uh, seek uh, to that seek to advance progress well these people can also use it in the future of course it's not because fiji is finished that everything is finished uh, we all are very much aware of the fact that financial inclusion is far from finished and needs to progress and we simply need to keep on stimulating people to seek help and to look for tools and instruments where they can help and Fiji provides these tools, the underlying documents uh, like PAFI provide these tools and we just need to try to and I hope in particular that the symposium which is running in May and June will put again a little bit more emphasis and spotlight on, on the work Fiji's done and I'm quite confident speaking for myself that uh, Fiji will be instrumental in, in keeping the flame burning and, and, and help people in advancing financial inclusion. <music>